day everyone. I just wanted to do a little video today about trailer maintenance. I'm going to go over some of the things that are less obvious. Um, I'm going to assume that if y'all are using a trailer, especially a cattle trailer, that you understand that greasing the bearings and, and checking all of the tension of your bearings, making sure it's all tight, all of that is, I'm going to assume that you know all of that. Um, so we're going to go into some details that you might not think about, some things that maybe not quite as obvious. Um, so I'm, I'm going to kind of let this video play through and let y'all kind of watch me washing it down. Um, and I'm going to kind of talk to y'all about a couple different less obvious points that can really help to extend the life of your trailer. I think the first thing to remember is that the best way to extend your trailer is to have an aluminum trailer, I think. Um, but the reality is, is not all of us can afford an aluminum trailer. They are very expensive, especially now. Um, even steel trailers of the one that you see me backing up right here, this one used to be about 7000 now it's about 14000 I don't even know what the aluminum trailers are going for now, but I know that they're not cheap. But that would be a really good way to extend the life is to do that. Um, but I want to go into some less obvious ways to extend the life of a steel trailer and and as a welder and you know my background is in welding and and I've kind of got some education in a lot of that I feel like I have a pretty decent understanding of what what keeps steel um, quality and what keeps it from oxidizing um, a lot of people don't realize that paint can actually cause your steel to break down and oxidize if it's not done right <clears throat> and let me explain why this is so a lot of times and I'm sure everyone or a lot of people have seen those cars where the Bondo will start to but break off and you'll see rust all up underneath there or the the um, the paint will start to chip away and then you look under there and you're horrified at how much rust there is and what it is is a little crack will form a little bit of something and it will start to get water in there and then it will hold that water back in the back and that water will really start to oxidize and it can't dry back out well we actually do fire pits uh, out of our shop sometimes and a lot of times we don't paint those fire pits and those fire pits will last for a long time and the reason is is because there's nowhere to hold hold the moisture to it so it gets wet but then it dries right back down so that's kind of the thing that you want to think about when you're washing a trailer and maintaining that is you know someone told me once that it's not what you can see but it's all the places you can't see that's what really wears down a trailer so I'm gonna kind of put in some different pictures in this video and I'm gonna put in a couple different places and as it plays through I'm gonna talk about a couple different things and um, I've got a couple points at the end of the video that are beyond just um, beyond just the washing of the trailer and things like that. But I try to put a couple different things throughout the video. OCD person can really get into trouble on a job like this because it's easy to look at the trailer as a whole and you've just got done with your cows and everything and and you're just wanting to get it cleaned back up and your first thought is is to make it just look really nice when you're driving down the road and not everybody's like that but I'm talking about when you're cleaning it up and so you just clean up what you can see but a lot of times the hinges the all the little tiny connections around your welds um, between your between your slats especially if you have wood slats all of those things can really become a problem and that's one reason why I really really love these rubber slats that you're looking at here these slats are always evenly spaced all the way apart they'll never rot on you they're a really good um, slat and, and I'm not being sponsored by them at all 
um, although I think they should because these are a wonderful slat. I also really like how thick the groove is on there. So that can really save your trailer is not having all of that tight together. So you can see here that it not only is it not tight between the gaps, but it's not tight up against that back piece of metal there. There's actually space all the way around that. And the reason that's important is for one, you can actually clean that out really good. But number two, there's, there's not very much ability for oxidation. So the, the air will allow it to dry out very, very quickly like that. And I just wanted to say to you guys, I completely understand that not everybody has a nice pressure washer like this. Um, but I'm, I'm going to have a video soon coming out about um, tools that you need around the farm. And, and this is not a tool that you need, but this is definitely a really, really good tool to have. It's a tool that's uh, very useful and you can save your brush hog, you can save your trailers, and it's just really nice. But a hose will do, you just need to keep in mind all of the most important key points that need to be cleaned. right here underneath the fender. A lot of people don't give that enough attention. And then behind the wheel well here, people don't pay attention to that. That can get pretty dirty. And underneath the trailer, that can get really dirty. You need to pay attention to some of the places that people don't think about. Guys, I would like to just say real quick, if you're enjoying this, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, I would really appreciate it if you'd go ahead and subscribe. Thank you very much. Okay guys, so I want you to look at this right here. This is the place that will absolutely eat your trailer up. It will shorten the life of your trailer. Do you see how you've got a weld and then not weld and then a weld and then not a weld? Everywhere there's not a weld, that creates a deep seam that you can fill up full of basically poop and pure nitrogen that will get back there and just really start eating away at the lifeblood of your trailer. All of that, if you don't clean that out, that's what really starts to eat your trailer away. So here's a small cattle trailer that I bought for, I think it was about $400. Um, now, there's a reason I got it for $400, but I still think it was a pretty good deal. But I bought the trailer and all of the key spots were starting to get rusted out. And of course, as a welder, I'm, I'm pretty good at being able to repair those kinds of things. And that's the reason I went ahead and bought it. But the point is, is those kinds of things happen to these trailers and they start to get rotted out. Sometimes people don't even know it. And Guys, I'm going to tell you, I've seen some pictures of some very bad accidents on the sides of the road. and It's not something you want to see. You want to make sure you're, the floor of your trailer and your trailer is solid and you're hauling livestock in there. Now here's another spot guys that is just so important to keep clean. Now I don't always mean laying down on your back and, and washing it out, although that would be the best way to do it, but nobody's perfect. But if you can just get to the top side and just really focus on that, that inner groove washing that out, that'll do a lot more than you think it will. You can really get in there and, and clean it up pretty good. So at least each time, if that's all I was going to do, with a water hose is I would go in there and wash out each one of the wells behind the wheel wells and then thoroughly wash out that inner groove there at the bottom.
Now, of course, no day on the farm would be complete without a couple of problems. We lost a belt and we also ran out of water. So we were set back a day after we had to go get the belt in town, but we got it all back on and everything's okay. I really like to keep a set of these box inch wrenches right here guys. One is 7 16 and a half, the other one's a half and 9 16 They're really nice to have around the farm, they're really really handy. Uh, but we're finally back at it guys. I really don't know why I didn't just have a hose filling this thing up, as I could have just kept a hose in there while I was washing this trailer down. I've gotten used to not having it close to a hose. Anyway, that's what's nice about this one hooked to the PTO is I can pressure wash anywhere whether I've got water or not. Sorry guys, I just couldn't help it. I've always wanted to do a slow motion walk. So there it is. I've been editing uh, this video for quite a while now. Um, this video guys took a lot of work to put all this together. I only had one camera, had to do all the different shots and everything. So I do hope y'all appreciate it. Um, I know that I'm not great, um, but I'm slowly learning and that's something I've really enjoyed about this whole process with the farming and the videoing and Having this community, having all y'all watching my videos and communicating and talking amongst yourselves and talking with me. And, and I've really appreciated that. And I've learned a lot along the way. And I hope that some of y'all have picked up a little bit of benefit as well. So I told y'all at the beginning of the video, I wasn't really going to talk about greasing bearings and things like that. But I would like to talk about the hinges inside of your trailer. That's actually another trap point for a lot of different um, stuff in there. You can get a lot of manure and things like that in there. And if you don't keep it greased, unfortunately, it will actually start to build up stuff inside of there. I've actually put new grease in there and it has pushed out old manure. On that subject I do like to wash out those hinges but only if you're going to actually grease inside those hinges if you're not going to grease it don't push any of that out of there uh, but I like to go ahead and wash it and then grease all of the hinges inside of there afterwards your bearings and all like that to your trailer that should be greased before you ever take off and start working with your cattle in the first place
So right here guys, I have a grease zerk that has actually been broken off. So I just stick an old grease zerk inside of my grease gun and then you shove that in there. Sometimes you have to push a little bit of pressure on it and you can re-grease any spot even if the uh, grease zerk has been broken off. Sometimes it'll get you out of a jam. And over here, I like to take the grease rag that I keep around and just kind of go ahead and finish off greasing all of the the little rods and stuff. I don't want to put an overwhelming amount of grease on there. That just gets really nasty. But if you just kind of lightly slick it up, it'll keep it from rusting over and make it easier to move around. You definitely, like I said, you definitely do not want a whole bunch of nasty grease all over that. That's just going to get all over you. It's just going to be a mess and it's going to be slippery. And some places, even if most of your cows are good, you're going to want to be able to grab hold of that thing and get it latched up. I know all of you know exactly what I'm talking about. So once I get done with all of this, one of the things I really like to do is just make sure that my tractor has been washed back off. If I'm using a tractor, I want to make sure it's clean. So as always, guys, don't forget to like and subscribe.